What's up and welcome. Star Wars is huge. It is a massive franchise. Now of course the IP is probably most known for its movies. However, it has dipped its toes into many different forms of media. From TV shows to toys to fast food collaborations to tons of different types of merch. Ranging from clothing to um, Star Wars toilet paper. Yeah, that was a real thing. Now today I am focusing on one type of Star Wars media, of that media being video games. There are tons of Star Wars video games, like a shit ton of them. So I decided to play 40 years of Star Wars video games by picking one game from each decade and playing it to see how these Star Wars video games have evolved over the decades. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600 came out in 1982 and um, well, look at it. The game is very simplistic as you would expect. This is a game that came out in the Stone Ages. Now I will admit I am probably not the most qualified to talk about these older games as I haven't played that many from this era. And yes, I see you sitting on the toilet screaming at me through your phone saying why the hell did you decide to play this game if you don't really know what to say about it. Well, first off, good question. Second, this is the first Star Wars game ever. This is the game that started it all in in terms of video games. Now, this is one of those endless runner type games in which you will try to beat your high score with each run. You play as well for pixels and I am guessing it's probably meant to be an X-Wing Starfighter. The only enemies you will fight are at at walkers and that's the gist of it. There are some things that I do like about this game. There's no obnoxious HUD taking up much space on the screen. Both the player and the 8080 walkers health is indicated with color as the color of your ship and the 8080s will change each time their health gets lower. I also like the fact that there's feedback when the player is hit. You'll get a little knockback animation that is pretty cool. Now again, I do want to reiterate that I am probably not the most qualified to say whether or not this game is good. Hell, for all I know, people might have hated this game and thought it was a big pile of trash. Or people might have thought it was the greatest game ever made. What I do know is that if I was a child in the 80s, I'd probably play the shit out of it. So, there's that. When I think of Star Wars games, I think of cool lightsaber battles and, well, mainly cool lightsaber battles. What I don't think of is Doom. Star Wars Dark Forces is a Doom clone. And before we get into it, let me just establish what I mean by clone. Before there is another debate on whether or not a game is or is not a clone in my comment section. When I say a game is a clone, I am referring to the fact that it copies another game's game design. With Star Wars Dark Forces, this game has a very similar level design, enemy design and other game mechanics similar to Doom. And I am saying this because it's not the only game in this video I will be calling a clone. Now that that's established, let's get into it. This game is a first person shooter. The first thing I notice is the fact that you don't have the ability to look up or down. Now this is most certainly not a criticism but I do find it interesting to go back to these older games and know that at some point in time the ability to move the camera up and down was an innovation for an FPS game. Now despite the lack of vertical camera movement, the shooting still felt pretty smooth and overall feels very satisfying and fun. However, I do think this game could do some things a little bit better. The enemy variety is the first thing that comes to mind that could be improved. Even though the game has multiple iconic Star Wars enemies within it, all of them shoot you with the same blaster. And yes, I know that's accurate to the movies, but it does feel a little underwhelming, especially when compared to Doom that has different enemies with unique attacks and different weapons. Another thing similar to Doom is how you can pick up health, armor and ammunition. You also have to kill certain enemies to get access to keys in order to unlock different parts of the levels, which again is just like Doom. 
That brings me to the levels itself. I really like the levels in this game. You have a bunch of different tasks you will have to complete within them in order to complete the level. There are tons of enemies within these levels that will keep you busy. And again you have the keys that you need to acquire from enemies or by finding them to unlock certain sections. And it makes the levels just a little bit more interesting. Furthermore, the game has a story and some cutscenes in it as well. I must say I really enjoy the cutscenes, as it has that classic old school video game charm, which I really liked. And finally, I have to mention the sound design. I thought they did a great job at recreating the sounds to match that of the movies. You can make the argument that the FPS genre is not exactly the ideal fit for a Star Wars game but it worked out for Dark Forces. Yes, it's most certainly lacking in the epic lightsaber battle department, but it's still a fun FPS game. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is probably the first game in this video that a lot of people will recognize. This game was made by Bioware and has a lot of similar mechanics to their more popular franchises like Dragon Age and Mass Effect. Hell, I'm pretty sure many will say that Knights of the Old Republic was a predecessor to Mass Effect. Now if all of that said, it is obvious to deduce that this is an RPG Star Wars game. Meaning there are a lot of dialogue options and opportunities to talk to many NPCs and a bunch of choices that you can make and will have an effect on the world. And of course an abundance of side quests you can acquire by talking to NPCs. All of this was mixed in with a story that's pretty interesting and actually had my attention. And in addition to all of that, there's just a shit ton of other activities to do. For example, the arena battles that you can get by talking to Jabba the Hutt's long lost cousin. You also have a skill tree and a bunch of different skills that all have their own abilities and uses, suited for different players with different preferences. The skill tree is definitely not as fleshed out as something like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, but it's pretty decent. Much like all the other Bioware games, this game is a party based game, meaning you will have other members with you while you are on your adventure. These party members have their own unique skills, making them useful in different circumstances. For example, some members have good lockpicking skills that make them useful when it comes to, well, opening locked doors. The combat is similar to Dragon Age Origins, in the sense that you have to click on enemies to attack them, and the characters will fight till the enemies are defeated. I must say the animations for the combat are very well done, especially for its time. You also have a bunch of weapons to choose from, ranging from swords to blasters to, of course, lightsabers. A cool ability you have from the very beginning is the ability to dual wield weapons, and well, this is is always pretty cool. You also have the ability to upgrade these weapons as well as your armors. You can also make use of stealth and depending on your stats will determine how useful it is and it will definitely come in handy in certain areas of this game. During this time Bioware were the undisputed kings of RPGs and even though they have lost a lot of their prestige in the more recent years, their old games still deserve credit for being absolutely fantastic. Yes, this game has some elements that doesn't hold up that well, but what exactly do you expect from a game that's 21 years old? This is a game that I will absolutely enjoy playing in my own free time. And that factor alone is probably an indicator that this game overall holds up pretty well. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 came out right at the start of the decade, coming out in 2010. Now The Force Unleashed is a God of War clone, as it has a lot of similarities to God of War. Let's start with the gameplay. The game is a hack and slash. From the beginning of the game you are given a wide variety of moves that you are capable of doing, and I think it is always a good thing when games do this, especially in a hack and slash game. However, given that I recently made a video 
video on God of War clones, I can say that the game's combat overall just kind of is alright. To me, it feels a little clunky, which is mostly down to the animations being a little bit not that great. Also, the enemies, I think the enemies are not that well designed. Enemies are not very good at actually hitting the player. There were a number of times where I would make these slightest of movements and enemies attacks wouldn't land because of those slight movements. The thing is the enemies do a good job at keeping pressure on the player, but they struggle to actually hit the player, which is a little bit of a problem. The enemy variety is pretty good as well, but the enemies have very little moves, meaning it can be a little boring to fight these enemies. Some enemies are not that fun to fight at all, like the shield robot enemy you get early on in the game. I do like the fact that you need to use your force powers to remove its shield and I must mention that there are other enemies that have fun gimmicks like this where you have to make use of your force powers to weaken or to open them up for damage and that's actually something I like about this game. However the reason the robot enemy sucks to fight is down to its attacks. Where some enemies constantly miss the player, this mother trucker is pinpoint accurate. His attacks can't be blocked and he leaves very very little room for the player to attack him. Now one last complaint I have about the enemies is the fact that deflecting blaster bullets don't kill stormtroopers in one hit and I found that a little bit silly. The character you play as in this game is kind of OP. First off, most force attacks can be spammed and they do a lot of damage. But I must say that even though I thought the character is OP, the moves and the combos you can create is pretty awesome. Furthermore, the game shares a lot of other similarities to God of War as well. You have a rage mode. Killing enemies will give you health and it will also give you points you can use for upgrades. You also have a dodge, block and a double jump and also it has very similar level design. I don't have that big of a problem with the level design in this game. Again it's not as good as some God of War clones but it's decent. You can also find upgrades within them but they are relatively easy to find. I do appreciate that the game changes the levels up a bit, giving the player different segments within these levels which kind of makes them a little bit more interesting. The one thing this game does that is very annoying is related to the quick time events. For some reason the buttons you need to press appear in the far corners of the screen and the buttons are displayed in the smallest way possible, which meant I had to thoroughly scan my screen to see which button I had to press every time there was a quick time event. And I found Found this to be very stupid. Overall the Force Unleashed 2 was not the best game I played for this video, but it's still a decent enough game. Some of its gameplay elements let it down a little bit, but not to the point where the game is just unplayable or just not fun to play. So yeah, the Force Unleashed is pretty decent. Star Wars Jedi Survivor was released in 2023, 41 years after the first ever Star Wars game. Now Star Wars Jedi Survivor is inspired by Souls-like games, having similar level design and having a posture system that is kind of similar to Sekiro. And I must say that this formula works pretty well for a Star Wars game. This game's combat is absolutely awesome. I don't want to be that guy, but this game's combat does a great job at making you feel like a Jedi. The game also throws a ton of enemies at the player, and the enemies in this game have a wide variety of attacks and unique gimmicks as well where some enemies are weak to certain Jedi abilities while other enemies have their own counter attacks for certain abilities and that is pretty cool. Also there are some awesome boss fights that you'll find while progressing in the story and just in the world as well. The game also introduced a bunch of new combat stances. Now many people will have their different opinions on these stances but my personal favorite was the pistol stance and the double bladed stance that makes you look like Darth Maul which was pretty cool. I also love the fact that this game gives you the force abilities you have already unlocked in Jedi Fallen Order and the game basically expands upon those abilities giving you new ones in this game. 
The levels are very well done as well. Yes, I love the Souls-like level design and checkpoint system, even though I understand that there might be people that aren't the biggest fan of it. The reason I love it is due to the fact that enemies will respawn upon the player dying, always giving you something to fight and how the levels will come together through shortcuts, which is always satisfying. Furthermore, killing enemies, opening chests and finding all kinds of things in the world gives you XP that you can use to acquire new skills. The skill tree is good. Every skill you acquire actually feels like it is enhancing the player's movesets and abilities. The game also gives the player more open-ended areas to explore, and exploring in this game is actually fun. You have a number of things that require upgrades, for example your stem packs, and the materials are acquired through exploration. Not to mention the game gives you a lot of customization options, ranging from Cal Kester's look to his outfits down to his lightsaber. The environments in this game are amazing. Yes, this game has the advantage of being a modern game, so obviously the graphics looks good, but the environments are where the game truly shines. The biggest negative for me is the fact that this game was released in a terrible state and well there are still some performance issues and it just kind of sucks. I really like this game. Yes, this game has some performance issues here and there, which should have been resolved but when this game works, it's a damn fine Star Wars game. The franchise has definitely seen better days. This is certainly true when it comes to its more recent movies and TV shows, but the games, well I think the games are still pretty good. Yes, there are some recent Star Wars games that didn't exactly have the most polished releases, like Jedi Survivor and the Battlefront Classic Collection that released earlier this year. And let's not forget Star Wars Battlefront that tried to milk every bit of money out of your wallet. Because EA is a financially struggling company. What I'm trying to say is that it wasn't all smooth sailing with the Star Wars video games, especially in more recent times. But the games I think overall are still where the franchise is at its strongest. There are a lot of good Star Wars games out there, especially from the 2000s. So if you are looking for some Star Wars action and you watch the prequels and original series too many times and don't want to watch the Disney slop, the games, they might have you covered. That is it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.